I'm in Konkan, which is in northeastern Thailand. And today we're gonna eat an extremely rare Thai dish that includes fish and an entire tray of herbs. But really quickly, first, how did we get here? In order to support local communities and highlight their unique food, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has recently announced Thailand's hidden dishes, which includes five rarely seen Thai dishes that come from five lesser visited provinces. And they asked me to travel across Thailand to eat all of them. After eating a spectacular Akka meal in the mountains of Chiang Rai, today we're in Khon Gan. Northeastern Thailand to cook and eat a traditional Isan dish that you won't find on menus. So we ended up having to drive our rental car from Chiang Rai to Chiang Mai. It was about a three hour drive or so because Chiang Mai is a bigger city and they have a direct flight to Isan, where we're gonna find Thailand's next hidden dish. Okay, here we go. Goodbye, Northern Thailand. We made it. Welcome to Khon Ken. This is in Isan, in the northeastern region of Thailand. Let's go eat. But before we go to eat Thailand's hidden dish, there's one thing that you absolutely have to eat when you come to Khon Ken. We got here just in time. He's making a fresh batch of grilled chicken, salt-crusted grilled fish, other grilled items. And you eat it along with fiery grilled papaya salad, something you can't miss when you come to Isan. Hasit met, hasit met. That is the dish that you have to eat when you come to Khon Ken. Somtam or Tambu Bala. Uh, fermented fish with crab, green papaya salad. And they do it incredibly well here. All the chilies are already half pounded. So they, then she just takes a giant spoon of it plus dry chilies to the mortar and pestle to pound those up. But I asked her about how many chilies she added. And she said, oh, it's about 50 chilies on one plate. Oh man, and yeah, so I, I just asked her about how many chilies, she said about 50. Serious, seriously, there's more. This is one of those plates where, it, look, if you scoop down below, there's more chilies than papaya. Oh man. She added in mecatin, white popinac seeds. Look at that, look at that bite. Oh, I'm gonna, okay. Oh. oh wow, oh man, that's gonna be fire in a few minutes. It's crisp, it's salty, it's balanced with a little bit of sweetness. Oh man, it's refreshing. You've got the umami of the fermented fish sauce, the pala, the crabs in there, the tomatoes, the lime juice, the acidity. Okay. First bite is not that spicy, but you can tell it's already starting to build. It's gonna build for sure. Mm. Oh yeah, that's tasty. Okay, sticky rice. What you can do is ball up a, a ball of sticky rice and then dip, submerge. Mm. The fragrance of the pala with the lime juice has a little bit of a sweetness to it as well. All of that balance of flavor. Okay, it's starting to, the spice, my mouth is on fire. I think they're also quite well known for their gaiyang, their grilled chicken. 
Give it a dip in the namjim. Chicken is smoky. It's really juicy and really creamy on the inside. We also got some thumb sap kaduk on. This is a pork rib bones, sour soup, lots of herbs in here. You can see lots of chilies in here too, mushrooms, lime juice. Oh, when you take, whoa. When your mouth is on fire from the chilies and then you take the hot soup and they keep there's charcoal in, it's a fire pot. They keep charcoal in here to keep it boiling and hot. When you take the hot soup on top of those chilies, it just magnifies it. Oh, that brings a tear to your eye. Let's go back in for more. Oh. Mm. I'm sweating. Mm. Oh yeah, this is a feeling, a sensation you don't want to miss when you come to Konken. My mouth is on fire. Oh, oh, pet ching, super spicy. Oh, man, yes. Oh, there was a tear, it dripped down. Luckily, the rain has cleared. My entire face is on fire. A really friendly family. Okay, from here, we are on our way to the next place where we're gonna discover and learn about Thailand's hidden dish of Khon Khen. So we have met up with P. Kam Nang, and she is an Isan. She's a, so knowledgeable. She's a, a writer. She's a historian. She knows the history of dishes of Isan culture and the food. And she has, it's actually an amazing modern restaurant, but she cooks in the extreme traditional way. And so she was just explaining to us a little bit about the dish that we're gonna be preparing, which is Thailand's hidden dish of Isan, which is called ao pla or a pla. Can be called either though, ao pla, which is called a pla. And so, it's a dish with fish that uses some of the freshwater fish of this region, but it's a dish. I mean, I've been to Isan many times. I've never had it before. I've never seen it. Ying, have you tried this dish before? It really is a hidden dish. Yeah. It is a hidden dish. And we have the privilege to be here to watch the entire process, how it's going to be made, and of course, to eat it. <laughs> So she's getting started first, steaming the rice. She has such a cool setup here. The house, big tables, big yard here. But then in the yard here, she has this uh, hut set up with a traditional kitchen. All the traditional utensils, baskets for steaming, clay pots, ceramics, uh, so that she can teach so that she can preserve the ancient cooking techniques. Kun Kam Nang has set out all of the ingredients for the ao pla. There's fish in the name, uh, but she said that it needs to be a type of soft fish, a type of freshwater fish. And today, the name of the fish, uh, it can be a variety of names of fish, but the fish is called pla yong, which in English, is Pseudoleus plerotania fish. And then there's just incredible variety of herbs and produce. There's galangal, there's chilies, shallots, garlic, there's herbs. You could see, um, it looks like lemon basil, dill. I think that's rice paddy herb. There's some mustard greens, there's some flowers, there's some stems. This is all gonna go into the dish. And this main seasoning ingredient, 
you never want to miss when you're in Isan is pala, which is fermented fish sauce. So we're going to see the whole process from here. As an expert on Isan food and a historian and a writer, uh, this is a dish that she has been promoting for the last five years and like bringing back, reviving, bringing it back to life, promoting it as a dish that should be celebrated. Oh, so this is a must. That herb, she explained, is very important in this recipe and it's called sadao din. I don't know of the English name of it, but it provides this bitterness, but not just a, not just a sharp bitterness, but it's a well-rounded, she said it's a well-rounded bitterness. So, uh, เครื่องปรุงในเมนูอ๋อปลาค่ะก็มีอย่างเดียวเลยค่ะก็คือปลาร้านะคะปลาร้าเท่านั้นนะปลาร้าจะให้รสเค็มนะปลาร้าจะต
such a vibrant dish, such a traditional dish, and just all those herbs are of so much importance. So that needs to be on the fire for approximately 15 minutes to cook. In the meantime, she has some other dishes that she's already prepared earlier this morning that she wants us to try right now as that's cooking. And then, what a, what a treat. I mean, this is straight up chef's table in her home where she has this huge, long table. I mean, you could, I mean, she caters to only private groups here, uh, preserving the art, the tradition, the wisdom of Isan cuisine. Wow. Whoa. Oh, wow. What a dish. <laughs> I am just blown away. This is the first dish. This is one of the most impressive dishes, platters I think I've ever seen. It's called Miang Krip Bua Nam Oi. And it is a roasted, salt crusted, roasted snakehead fish with an entire garden of lotus flowers made into little cups with all the different Miang inside with like shallots and coconut and lime. There's butterfly pea flowers, and then the dressing, which is sugarcane juice, as well as uh, fermented fish sauce in there. What a display. This is gorgeous. Okay, now blast. So you take one of the little lotus flowers, and then you take some of the, the snakehead fish, which is grilled and roasted. And she, oh, look at the, look at the texture of that snakehead fish. She said the salt is a special type of salt that's not that salty, okay? That goes inside. Then, some of the dressing. Okay, my cup. Okay, here we go. Okay, cup, cup, my cup. I cannot wait to try it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. That is an absolute symphony in your mouth. Mm. The petals of the lotus just kind of dissolve on your tongue. You've got the, the ginger, the lemongrass, the lime, the shallots all crunch and bring their flavor. Yet nothing is overpowering. The smokiness of that fish, the oiliness of it, and the light sweetness of the sugar cane with the fragrance of the bala. Wow. I'm mock cup. It's so tandai mark up. Oh mark. It's so good. It's the most balanced dish of this kind I've ever had. Mm. Appetizer. And it's just an appetizer. <laughs> appetizer. So <laughs> big. Another method to do it, add in some of the, the petals, the insides of the, the lotus flower, plus a butterfly pea flower, plus some of the salt from the crust of the fish. Mmm. Mmm. That's even more things going on in your mouth. Mmm. I love it with that salt. Oh, that even enhances it more. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That was the expert move there. That sprinkle of salt from the fish crust. Oh, it's so good. And it's not that salty yet. It's just a balance. Oh, that's impressive. Next dish, I'm gonna take some of the kind of gene, the rice noodles onto my plate, half a hard boiled egg. The dish is called kapun nampla. So again, it's bala, it's fermented fish sauce in here. You see the, the makrut lime in there. And this goes over the noodles. Oh, the chilies, oh, the aroma. Oh, the makrut. Man, you can see all the chunks in there, all the herbs, all the galangal, okay? Mmm. Oh, that egg is incredible. The, the warm gooiness of the yolk. Mmm. And that curry, it, you immediately taste the herbal medicinal flavor of, it tastes like finger root and galangal and the magrut lime in there. Mmm. Has this incredible depth of fish complexity to it, fermentation to it. 
Oh, but not, again, not overpowering, so clean. We got all the raw vegetables to eat, mustard greens and mint and cucumbers and our flowers. Mm. Very refreshing. The next dish, this is a, a chicken broth called lam kai. It is cooked in the, the bamboo, roasted in the bamboo. Um, and it's like a healing, medicinal chicken broth. Mm. Oh, that's the, the definition of chicken broth right there. Oh, that brings a whole new meaning to the word chicken broth. It's condensed. There's so much chicken aroma to it, and yet it's not light, it's not heavy, it's not greasy. Mm. Even you can almost taste the sweetness of the bones. Oh man, that's a broth to cherish. Whoa, another dish. <laughs> the, the presentation is on the next level. We've come to one of the signature dishes here. And any cook like a Oh Krabok Ching Rit Fak Tong Ka. A Krabok Ching Lit Fak Tong. So it is so many things going on and something truly unique and ish interesting. It is pork ribs with these uh, they're called grabok, but I believe in, in English I mean they're known as Isan almonds. It's a type of nut that grows locally here. But the milky substance on the inside of the pumpkin is a combination of those nuts, the nut milk from those nuts, plus three kilos of crickets, cricket powder, crickets pounded into that. And that's a sauce for the pork ribs. What a unique dish. Any, any, any men, men menu bolan, my cup? Bolan ka, any bolan le. This is, this is a really old recipe. Actually impossible to find unless you're here, like incredibly rare rare Isan food. Strategy here is to grab, grab a bone. Oh, it's gonna be so tender. I need that salo. Oh, oh, it's just falling off the bone. Oh, oh, it's been cooked for two days. Oh man, oh, I don't even know if it's possible to pick up the bone. It just slides out. Wait, I might need to pick up two bones. <laughs> Oh, okay. So the first step is to just actually taste the, the pork on, whoa, the bones are just sliding. <laughs> I can't even hold the bones. Okay, cooked for two days. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -mm. A baby can eat that. <laughs> it's so tender. The fat is just turned to liquid on your on your mouth. That is unbelievable. Oh, it's so fragrant and fatty, and juicy. Oh, it's just, oh, oh man. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, and then you take some of the, the milk, which is again a combination of crickets and Isan almonds. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's like whipped cream. My side, my side, no, my gum. There's no milk, no dairy whatsoever in that. That is like thicker and richer than whipping cream. Mm. Wow, that is unbelievably creamy and so fragrant. Bala. You don't, oh, it's like bala, do I? There's bala in it too, wow. <laughs> fermented fish. But you don't really taste it, it just brings it, it's that harmony. That is ultra cream. I'm gonna grab a piece of the pork. And then one more dip. The num chim with garlic and chilies, sesame seeds. Mm. Mm. That provides a contrast to the richness because you got that really fatty, rich pork, the really creamy almond milk, the crickets. And then that's really nicely sour, garlicky. Wow, that combination is extraordinary.
I think we need to try a combination with everything on it. Go in for some of this mm -hmm. on top of the pork. Some of the milk. Okay, that's the bite. Oh, wow. Okay. That combination is takes it to the next level. Oh, the entire bite just melts in your mouth, collapses. Creaminess, sour acidity, chilies and garlic, porky liquids. Wow, it's, that's unbelievable. Never had a dish like this before. Totally different from anything. And absolutely extraordinary. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay a little bit of the a little bit of the pumpkin next. Wow. That is That's like the creamiest pumpkin you'll ever have either. Two. Cream on top of cream on top of fatty, meaty juices. Oh, that's unbelievable. Oh, almost forgot the dried chilies. Mm. Oh, it's so fragrant. Oh yeah, that's spicy. Okay. So here we are. This, it's another just mind-blowing tray of different Isan stews and dishes and uh, boiling patty rice, patty crab heads boiling away. We've got sticky rice. And then this, the apla, that is the main dish. I mean, we came to eat everything, but that dish is what we saw the entire process of. That is the Isan hidden dish of Thailand. So you should take some sticky rice. Oh. oh. Eat my cup, okay. Oh, it's really fragrant, sticky rice. I'm gonna take a, a piece of the fish. Okay, oh yes, the head, oh, all of those herbs down there. Dab it, kind of like dab it into the fish. Get a little bit of that buttery fish, plus a little bit of those herbs. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, that flavor is unbelievable. I got a sweet shallot, the chilies in there, the herbs. That one bitter leaf that she said that she added that is an absolute must. It gives this bitterness, but it's a sweetness at the same time. Like she said, it's so well-rounded. You taste the dill in there, the lemongrass. The fish is so buttery, melts in your mouth with that fresh, young, sticky rice. That is unbelievable. Oh, what a dish. Oh man, it's just so healthy, so natural tasting, so herbal. The fermented fish in there to bring out the, to bring in the sauce. Um, but then also she said you have to use something that's watery, juicy, such as fish that brings the waters and the juices come out of it to make that broth. Wow, that's, that's something extraordinary. That is incredibly tasty. Yeah, and some of the you can see that the herbs are at different stages of, of doneness. Oh man, you taste the lemongrass, the dill. Mm. That is the most like well-rounded, medicinal, bitter broth you'll ever taste. Oh, it's good. It's like sweet, naturally from all those herbs herbaceous, chili laden. The oils of the fish has come out. Oh, it's so good. While it's still boiling, I wanna try those crab heads. So you dip your sticky rice. <laughs> oh. Mm. Oh, that's so rich. It's buttery, it's creamy. Mm. And taste the naturalness of it. Oh, it's so good. So creamy. Oh, and the, even the aroma of that smoke smells like hissing melted butter. 
Wow. That is a delicacy. That was like roasted brown butter. Oh man, the butteriness of that fish. The balance of herbs. Mm. That chili is on fire. Mm. I almost cannot believe that stew. Like it's the perfect balance harmony. Every herb is in there for a reason to counter contrast. Sweet, spicy, lemongrassy, herbal, the dill, the bitterness, the buttery fish, the fragrance of the fermented fish sauce. It's, it's truly extraordinary. Okay, we have some more dishes to try. Next up, I'm gonna go, go for the next dish, which is called goi gung makrok. So it's the little freshwater shrimp with the water olives. What a dish. Water olives are a unique ingredient. Oh. Mm. Mm. oh, the little shrimps are so fragrant and sharp. You got to chew them up. Oh man. Then you got the, like, tastes like roasted shallots and chilies. And then you got the bitter, kind of like the astringency of the water olive. And then you eat it. She said it's good to chase it with this, this one, this herb. The contrast of the flavor, oh, like a mustardy, mm, wasabi greens. Yes. Oh, yes. The next dish is called Gang Wai Gaduk Mu. So, why are the rattan shoots here, I believe, with bone in ribs? Oh man, this looks incredibly delicious. Mm. Mm. It's unbelievable. Again, it has that contrast of bitter, spicy, sweet, but not, not a sugary sweet, like a fresh, shoots or fresh herbal sweet, meaty from the pork. Mm. Oh, that's unbelievable. The depth and complexity of flavor is unbelievable. Okay, and next up for a dish called om, om nua. This is beef with lots of dill. So what the thing with om is you need to have some of the, some of the rice, rice in here to kind of thicken it, I think. And then pieces of looks like beef shin. Isan has a lot of incredible food. And one of the things that I've always thought is that, you know, like the sometime the green papaya salad is the most famous. But these stews, these hyper regional, like oftentimes seasonal herbal stews are truly some of my favorite dishes in Isan. Things that I could eat daily that like just blow my mind with complexity and flavor. These traditional stews. Mm. Oh man, really heavy on the dill. The lemongrass, the beef melts in your mouth. The rice just kind of thickens it. Mm. Outstanding, everything. This is award-winning actually. And then I think this might be the final dish of the meal, lam kai. This is the chicken that was cooked in the, in the bamboo. Oh, wow, that melts in your mouth. It is so tender. It literally falls off the bone. It's been cooked overnight. You really taste the fragrance of the lemongrass in there. Chilies. Oh, it has that kind of just so fragrant, smoky. Wow, everything is just on the next level. Mm. These are the highest quality of every dish that I've ever had. And just so many unique flavors. Like, it's an actual overdose of complexity of flavor in your mouth right now. That was an unbelievable meal. I am actually stuffed right now. So much food. Some of the most impressive platters of food I've ever seen. And we're having a traditional Isan dessert called Baimanoi. And it's a, like a leaf jelly. 
a leaf jelly on the bottom with coconut milk on the top. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it kind of has a, a green taste to it, mm -hmm. but then almost a vanilla-y pandan aroma to it as well. A very light melt in your mouth. Yeah. Richness of the coconut milk. Fragrance of sesame seeds. Yeah, it's really good, really light. Oh yeah, oh, I'm pretty stuffed. That was uh, just an unbelievable meal. And all the dishes were rare, extremely hard to find. And I absolutely love what Kun Kam Nang is doing. She's a historian preserving the wisdom and culture of Isan cuisine. And so I would highly, highly recommend her restaurant when you visit Kan Ken. From here, we're driving back to the city and we have dinner. Okay. Well, it's a little bit dim in here, uh, but welcome to Gan. Well, this restaurant's very popular. Tables are full. Um, and it is a chef-driven restaurant, but you do order off the menu. It is a full menu list, not a, not a chef's table. So they actually have a mix of Isan, some other regional Thai dishes on their menu, as well as even some Western food on their menu, but I'm gonna keep it, uh, try to try some of their, their Isan-specific dishes. Off with a probiotic beverage. They had four to choose from. I chose the tapache, it's called. They said pineapple, chilies, and ginger. Ooh, nice. Oh, the chilies and ginger. First dish has arrived, which is geng om, one of my one of my favorite Isan dishes. Um, it is more like a stew with a right amount of ratio of water, which simmers down, creating this sauce. There's usually lots of lemongrass, lots of dill. There's basil in here, there's green chilies. This one is the upgraded version with asobuco. And also, I mean, and, and it is local Thai beef from the next province over with the bone marrow on the inside. All oh, that beef is so tender. I'm gonna grab a spoonful. It's very aromatic very herbaceous. Mm. Oh, the beef melts in your mouth. I love the finely shaped lemongrass. Oh, the herbs, the dough in there. It's a little bit mild, but the herbs are very fresh. Okay, here we go. The rest of all the dishes we ordered have arrived. Oh, thank you. But first, before we start eating, some rice wine. Kapun kab. I'm gonna start with a gang bub. This is a isan, another stew full of vegetables and thickened with rice. Mmm. Mmm. That one is really fresh. So many herbs and vegetables. So many different textures of vegetables as well. Okay, next up for the somtam, and somtam is of course pounded papaya salad. But, and we've, I mean, we've already had the papaya version this morning, but this is a totally different version. Not even made with papaya, but there's pork, there's, there's shrimp satay on the top. And then on the bottom, there's the, the pounded salad made from jicama, made from tomatoes. Oh, there's even cashews in it. And long beans. And there should be some pala in here as well. Jicama salad. Mmm. Okay, that's really good. Oh man. Fragrant. Not very pungent, but nice rounded flavor. The jicama gives a crunch, but it's also very soft. Like kind of like an apple almost. Um, kind of like dissolves. Then you've got the nuts, got the tartness of the tomatoes, the long beads in there. Okay, you gotta chase that with a satay. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Very juicy. Okay, the next dish that we got is the mokla. So this is 
and there's fig leaves in it. He said there's fig leaves, there's fish, there's curry paste, there's coconut milk. I'm gonna take some of this onto my rice, and then he likes to eat it with piknam pla, chilies, fish sauce, and garlic. Oh, the shallots, this one is nice, really chunky. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really good. I think what's really making it are the smoky fragrance of the fig leaves, the curry paste. The fish is just so uh, buttery. And then with that fish sauce, that brings out the flavor. The food was really fresh, top quality, and I loved all those different ferments that they make. I want to say a big thank you, first of all, to you for watching this entire video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. And I want to say also a big thank you to the Tourism Authority of Thailand for making this entire trip happen. Tomorrow, we fly back to Bangkok. Then we're going to get in our car and drive to the province of Petburi, which is in the western part of central Thailand for Thailand's next hidden dish. And it's gonna be a rare dish. We're gonna harvest the ingredient from a tree and they're gonna make a very rare, unique curry, something you're not gonna to wanna to miss. So stay tuned.